This video is going to be a very brief and basic introduction to the theory of NMR or nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. NMR spectroscopy involves interaction between radio frequency, so that's energy that corresponds to the radio portion of the electromagnetic radiation spectrum, uh, interaction between radio frequency and the nuclei of our atom. So over here I'm drawing a nucleus, I'm just modeling the nucleus as a sphere. In general chemistry, when you learn about quantum numbers, N, L, M sub L, and M sub S, you learn that the nuclei in atoms are constantly spinning on their own axis. You learn about this with the M sub S quantum number, which we learn has the values, potential values of one half or minus one half corresponding to a clockwise spin or a counterclockwise spin. Uh, again, we're referring to the spinning of the nucleus on its own axis. Because the nucleus is a charged particle, remember it contains a lot of protons which are positively charged, as this nuclei spins clockwise or counterclockwise on its own axis, it generates its own little magnetic field. And this is gonna be important when we're talking about NMR. So when we want to obtain an NMR spectrum for a molecule, we take our molecule, we put it into the instrument, and then we subject the molecules to a very strong external magnetic field. Because our nuclei are like little teeny tiny magnets, um, as they're spinning on their axis, they're generating their own little magnetic field. When we drop all of these molecules into a magnetic field, the molecules interact with and align with the magnetic field of the NMR instrument. So this causes all of our little nuclei to align with the NMR's magnet. And I'm just gonna kind of model that in this energy diagram over here. Here's my little nucleus. Here's its little axis of rotation. It's in a low energy configuration and it is aligned with the NMR's magnet. So once we get all of our nuclei aligned with the NMR magnet, we then take some radio frequency and we blast all of these nuclei with radio frequency, all of the different possible wavelengths and frequencies of radio frequency. This causes the nuclei to actually flip against the NMR's magnetic field. This is a high energy state. When they flip against the magnetic field, it moves them up into a higher energy level. And we know we have found that it's radio frequency that causes this flip against the NMR's magnet. Because this is a high energy configuration, the molecules do not like to stay with their nuclei aligned against the NMR magnet. As soon as we turn off the radio frequency and shut that off, the nuclei flip themselves back into a more comfortable alignment with the NMR's magnet. When they do this, they emit energy, the energy equal to the difference in the low, between the low and the high energy state. And this energy that they emit corresponds to radio frequency, uh, of course, because that's what type of energy it took to cause the flip in the first place. And this radio frequency is then translated into a spectrum, which looks something like this. There's a lot of different variability in the way an NMR spectrum appears. So um, this is just one example. In general, we have lines or we call them peaks or signals on the spectrum. There could be any number of them um, along an uh, x-axis that is numbered backwards. Sometimes there are additional features like these little swooping things associated with them or numbers that might be associated with some of these peaks. In the next few videos, I'm going to be teaching you how to interpret the spectrum that you get from an NMR machine.